Welcome to FluidityStudio.com. My name is Tyler, and today we're going to be going over flash sliding billboard ads and how we go about making those work. Um, what you'll see here first off starting out is a quick animation if I refresh. And then once we click to expand for details, we have the larger ad. And we, I have some interaction in here. So when you mouse over these, it uh, has a bunch of stuff going on. This one plays a movie. And then when I mouse off, it retracts and goes back. Now we're going to look at the examples that I've set up for you for, available for download in a zip file on my site. And this is really simplistic animation just to, just to help get you started on your way. Um, there, the flash files are included. So what you'll see here is a quick animation. And then it says click to expand for details. And when you click it, it opens up. And then another quick animation. And if you click to close, it will close. And also another function is when you click to open and you mouse off of it, you'll notice now it says click to expand for details because if I mouse off of this larger ad, even if I go up or to the right or left or down, it's going to retract and go back to the normal state. Now that's a function you can choose to do if you want to. You can just make it where it just a click to close, click to open up here if you want to. So if you do that, then you know obviously it will stay open because I haven't moused off of the moused over the large ad, but now I have to in order to get it to to do that. So it's up to you, however you want to do that. But let's get right into the flash files first. Let's look at the 1,000 by 45 pencil ad, the way it starts out, and uh, pretty simplistic. It goes to just a short animation, goes to last frame with a stop action. And then the button we have here behind everything is a background button. It's invisible. And in the button, we have some code that checks for um, the click to, which is this. So there's two frames in this click to uh, movie clip. One says click to expand for details, and the second frame says click to close. So we're checking if we're on frame one, then we're going to, when you click on the button, we're checking click to, if it's on frame one, then we're going to slide the ad down. We're going to show the hidden ad with the ID of two, which is the large ad. And then we're going to tell the click to to go to and stop on two, which says click to close. And then the reverse statement, basically, it's checking to see if we're on two. Then when we click, it's going to slide the ad up and hide the div with the ID of two. And we're going to tell it to go back and stop on frame one for the click to, so it says click to expand for details. And then on the rollout function, same thing. Now you can choose to do this or not. You can take this out and then the big ad, you can also remove the rollout function as well if you just want it to click to open and click to close. Um, so that's how I've got it set right now. And we're gonna take a look at the big one. The bigger ads, 1000 pixel width by 300 pixel height. Uh, it's got a stop action at the end. The first frame, uh, we can actually get rid of this. We don't really even need that. And we don't even need all of this either, to be truthful. Let's get this back. I think I got it. There we go. Okay. We can move this back, move that back. Okay. So what we have here for the first, first one is, um, this is named button two, but it, because I got rid of the first one. Um, it's a movie clip in the background here, and it's an instance name right now of button two. And we'll go ahead and change that to button one, just so I can get this edited. I'm trying to dumb down a, to a lower, um, easier workable file for you from what I had from a flash ad I did. So we'll change this to one and one. And what it does is it says on release, we're going to grab the URL that we define in our JavaScript file that links to the website for whoever we're advertising for. And then on the rollout function right now, it's telling it to slide up the add to and hide it. So basically what we were talking about before, it's now it's going to hide it once I roll out. And you can, like I said, you can take this function out and you can make the only the top one just click and open and close. That's all if you want to. And then the last stop action is all it is. So now let's get into the JavaScript file. 
This starts out, this is the, the speed at which it's opening. And I usually leave it the same. I like just how it is, but you can mess around with that if you want to. And then here is um, mouse over function, which I won't get too much into that. It's dealing with a database. If you want to connect to the database, to your own database and store your mouse overs and click throughs and all that stuff, that's what this is for. Um, that part of the code is commented out down below as well. So we'll start out with this. This is an added part to what that I added to the code. It's a preview function. And what it does is if I uncomment this line and this line and I save it and I bring this back up, what it's going to do is it's going to expand the ad right away on the page load for six seconds and then it's going to retract it. Now if you do that, I would suggest not having an animation in your top one, just allowing for this to change back and forth um, because then, like as you saw, they're both going to be moving at the same time and they're two separate things and they're going to get confusing. So I would make your top one with no animation and the next one have your animation. So when you click, you know, open and close. So if I comment those back out, then that function is no longer going to uh, be used. And what we do is we get down here, we have your slide down function. And again, this has to do with mouse over with your database. So we'll skip past that. And here's your slide up. And when we go down below, this is where you're going to add in your files. So when you have your Swift files completed, you're going to put them up on your server. You're going to put the fully qualified URL to the folder where they're stored with the forward slash after it. And this is where you're going to set your height, your width and height for the small and large ad. And then you're going to put the name of the file without the .swf extension uh, because that is included down below. And here is where we call, this is what we're calling to from the large file, uh, the large Swift file, where we um, click, it's an on-click function. It's telling it to grab the URL that we define, which right here is just saying mysite.com. So you're going to put the link of whoever you're advertising for in here, and that's where it's going to go when they click on it. Um, this is commented out again. This is code to a database. If you're going to count your click-throughs and then redirect them, then it's going to um, count that and send them to the site as well. And this is for the, the ID of your um, your ID in your table in your database. And again, that would be entered in up here, but that's commented out as well. So again, that'll be another another time and day when we go over something like that. If you're interested, then leave comments and let me know, and I will... Um, do another tutorial on how to connect to the database and, and track all that information. So here is where the first um, div is that, that is calling to the uh, 1000 by 45 pixel height. And this is all you're going to want to change here is height and width if you change those sizes of the first pencil ad. And then down here, this is the div 2. This is the larger one that has got a display of none, so it's hidden. And the only thing you want to change here is your height and width of the ad if you so decide to go, you know, um, higher or, um, you know, lower with the height and then again with the width. And those are the only things you're going to want to change in here is height and width on these two divs. Leave the rest alone and do your file structure here, the file folder, uh, link to the folder and the names of the files. And that's pretty much it. And what you're going to want to do when you get that all done is call it into your site. Very plain and simple. You just add script and source, and then you're going to call the fully, you know, full link to where the JavaScript file is is located, and then you're going to type is text in JavaScript, and then you're going to close that script, and that's basically it. That's how it's going to display in your website. So, and then if you're, you know, if you're going to use that through Google Ad Manager, if you're familiar with that, and you uh, use that on a regular basis. You can actually and take that code with the fully fully qualified URL to the JS file, and you can you know put that in uh, Google Ad Manager as well, and it will uh, run through there. So you can set your you know start and end date and all that. Um, Google uh, though will not track your um, you know clicks and all that stuff because it's not using Google Click Code. It, you would have to use this with your own database and track that with within that. Um, functionality. So again, if you guys have questions on that, then leave your comments on my blog and let me know if I get enough of them, then I will do another video, video tutorial on how to uh, set up a database and track all that information. All right. Thank you guys. And I hope this was very informational and we'll catch you next time. Bye.